Welcome to Men, Sex, and Tantra. Discover where your parents, porn, and religion never taught you about being a man and having extraordinary sex. Get ready to have your mind blown and your world rocked. Hey everybody, we are rolling into season three of Men, Sex, and Tantra. Woo! And today, from across the globe, I have John Herbert. Herbert. <laughs> Herbert. <laughs> he's going to say that a lot better than I am. And he's going to tell us where he's from and what he does. But I'm really super excited about this season. So take it away, John. Yeah, where am I from? It's a great way to start. Uh, geographically, born in England and then came to Australia when I was very, 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 very young and lost my accent as equally as young. Uh, I discovered that um, the Aussies could not understand uh, enunciating English um, speech. So I had to learn how to slur, drag my words on, learn how to say <laughs> g'day mate, slur all my words together to come up with a sentence. So Is that how you do I it? Speak... Slur them all together? Slur <laughs> them all together. <laughs> so speaking in a podcast, I need to slow down, enunciate my words, finish my T's and my I's and my J's and my G's. But give us one sentence and you're just straight up not even worrying about that. What would it sound like? What would it sound like? Yeah, it'd sound like a bit like this. Like I just go to the beach. I'm going to the beach today, I'm going to get some, some brekkie, head downstairs, get some lunch, you know, just do whatever I want. Okay. Uh, I understand but... that perfectly, but maybe that's because I've lived all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Tanya, maybe. I had an English accent for almost 21 years. Wow. I did. There's something about the English accent, depending on where you're from, um, is, is particularly special. Yeah. Yeah, so in Aussie land now. In Aussie land now. In Aussie land now and loving it. Live by the beach and enjoy taking walks by the beach. Yeah. Put that in my, my, my dating app profile. And <laughs> short walks and then, on the beach. <laughs> I walk on the beach. I walk on the beach, like other people that also walk on the beach. And then my work wise, so I am a relationship coach. I specialize in creating exhilarating relationships. <gasps> exhilarating relationships exhilarating relationships oh, wow. fuck what if i want a boring one can't come to well you, you can design well, well a boring relationship might be an exhilarating relationship <laughs> perfect <laughs> and like we can create that <laughs> um. <laughs> i like how i like it he's flexible he's a flexible coach <laughs> nice. Uh, everyone's got their limits you know like, yeah. I, I don't want to get up in the morning i want to stay in bed all day that's my, the idea of my perfect partner all right let's create that for you what does that look like for you perfect and to, and to get to that space has been a journey through looking at my own attachment patterns and becoming a coach um, which i started about five years ago um, learning how to um, take people through their somatic injuries and speak to whatever their attachment injuries are and then before that, I was 17 years in the corporate industry, or specifically film and television. Um, and oh I was an operations God. manager. Film what and television. You? Operations manager. Okay. All right. All right. And I love that. Loved working with staff. Got sent all over the world to either do due diligences on companies that we bought or uh, rolling out new pieces of software uh, and hiring and firing and mentoring staff, which... I love, that's um, it's the main bulk of my career has been that, working in corporate and discovering that people are very important assets to a company and conversations are very important things to have in order to keep your staff. And speaking to disc like the elephants in the room in regards to processes, systems, um, whatever's going on, and that flows into relationships. Yeah, so how did that How'd you do the transformation from that one to the other? That's a great question, Tanya. So I was coming towards the end of my career. I, I discovered that in order for the company to proceed into the next generation, the next iteration to for Gen Xs and, and Gen Zs, we really needed to, needed to take care of staff and have succession planning. <clears throat> so what I discovered that I needed to have a conversation with multiple heads of staff to see if this was possible and if everyone, everyone was behind me. And I got to the, speak to the CEO of this company. She flew out to Australia from the States and I had a conversation with her. And, and she said, this sounds like a great idea, John. What you're proposing in taking care of staff is great. Let's do this. And a year went by 
and it felt like there was no progress. There was no like, touching back into like, this, this, this feels, it wasn't a priority. And I could see that it wasn't a priority. And I thought, that's it. It's time for me to go. And in that transition period of wanting to go, I met a woman, as you do. And she encouraged <laughs> me to leave that job and discover what my true purpose was outside of the corporate world. And so I did that. I left my job and she had a, a cookbook that she'd written. Um, it was um, uh, plant-based, naturally sweetened and gluten-free. And she referenced that book to 1500 journal articles around nutrition and, and glycemic index and all this kinds of stuff um, and very, very intelligent. And she ended up becoming chronically ill. So I ended up being a full-time carer for her after my corporate career for three years. Wow. That's yeah. intense. Yeah, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. So me being thrust into this, um, well, choosing to go there and also part, I had no idea about attachment injuries. I had no idea about um, trauma bonding, um, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, yeah, cool. I've agreed to this. I want to do this. You know, I'm committed. I'm, I'm honorable. I'm going to honor my commitments. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with her for three years and, that relationship was a lot of push pull, a lot of um, uh, leaving the relationship, coming back, leaving the relationship, coming back. Yeah. And um, my promise to her was I was going to stay with her for three years so she could get the government benefits to take over the financial responsibilities and care responsibilities. So I did that. Um, but in that, I, I met my mentor while she was healthy. We did a lot of book touring around Australia. And in that book touring, I met someone who knew about like attachment injuries and the, uh, the Oedipal complex and all the old school Freudian Jungian type archetypes. And he also knew about um, core energetics, which is a, a modality from Wilhelm Reich, yeah. Alexander Rowan and John Parakos. And they tie in sexuality with the body structure and how the body is formed, your armoring is formed in your musculature and how your body shape transforms over as you grow up. So, I left her and started to be mentored by my mentor and progressed to where I am today. He taught me his techniques of the John Paracos modalities. And I've just kept on iterating my self-development work, like gone to Brazil, sat ayahuasca, um, learned all kinds of other modalities to, to be where I'm at today. Awesome. Well, that's, yeah, quite the journey. And then you and I met on Facebook I, uh, yeah, it's the, some of, I make some of the weirdest connections on Facebook. I was cruising, you had set, all of a sudden there's your picture. I'm like, who's this guy? Have I seen him before? And it's like, oh, come and jump in a Zoom room. And I'm like, oh, when is that? And I'm like, oh, that's in like five minutes or whatever. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is, but I'm going to go jump in a Zoom room with this dude. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, that was my first introduction to you. And you were leading some meditation and some contemplation, questions for contemplation. And, you know, here's this group, like I said, know nothing about, but I felt comfortable. It was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And I'm always up for, you know, new things. I'm really curious. And um, from there, I asked you for a reading because you were doing these readings. And I'm not saying what it is because I know you might be transitioning. So <laughs> I am transitioning. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm being secretive. Thank I'm being you. secretive about his old world. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but we had this great reading, and what actually made it great is John's ability to be unabashedly just a conversational. Like, you know, like I said something probably sexual because God knows that's, that's <laughs> it's kind of like just me at the bank. Hey, how's your orgasm? That's a natural <laughs> state of me talking about anything. And uh, he was awesome and just kind of rolled with that. And we just had that funny kind of vibe then going with the rest of the conversation, which was refreshing and great and just didn't feel like it had to be anything other than fun in the time, which I rarely find anybody able to do. And so that was super cool. And then I'm like, okay, this guy is awesome sauce. And after that, I was like, hey, yeah. All right, let's do this. So here he is today. Here I am. In this next season three, um, going to be giving us his ideas, things he's learned, 
um, and just general thoughts about some of these topics. And it, it looks like, from my looking at our lineup, our topic lineup, that we're actually going to be talking about some different things. And you should know, listeners, that each season when I have a different male guest, I don't uh, plan these things ahead of time. I figure it's a synergistic process between uh, them and myself about what things we come up with to talk about. So there's no rhyme or reason. If you're a linear engineer thinker out there, you're probably like, what the hell people? <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. I think you're going to be fine. I think you'll be okay with that. Uh, just know that coming up, we're going to have things like we're going to be talking about some online dating stuff. We're going to be talking about some uh, red flag relationship, red flags after the breakup um, expressing desire. And then uh, John just said something interesting that I probably will definitely add into this and this whole thing about trauma bonding because um, this trauma bonding is definitely something I think about and talk about as well. And it's really something that a lot of people don't understand a lot of or really, uh, you know, because why? Who's teaching it in school? But it's something that's really, really common. And so sadly... Um, really devastating to most relationships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I like the fact, John, that you've, you know, you honored your three-year commitment there. I think that's awesome. That tells me that you're a dude who probably has high integrity about what you say, you know, yeah. which is, he's nodding his head, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yes, yeah. correct. And, uh, <laughs> correct. and I think that that's, uh, I think, that's probably crucial for all of us is if we can't stand in our own integrity, if we can't trust ourselves in that way, it's very difficult to trust anybody else. And um, if we can't trust ourselves, we're just never really going to hit it out of the park. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm excited to be sharing uh, this season with you and uh, talking about the stuff we talk about. And so we're going to say bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs> and, and how do we say that in Aussie land? Uh, see you later. Uh, see you later. Until next time. Catch you later. <laughs> Good day, blokes. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>